Hello, my name is Nicole Watson, director of the Catherine G. Murphy Gallery and one of the curators of the St. Catherine University Fine Art Collection. Welcome to our virtual tour of fine art installed on campus. Our fine art collection reveals the values of St. Kate's and each publicly displayed artwork reflects our institution's commitment to women artists, the liberal arts, and social justice. St. Catherine University began collecting art around the time the college was founded in 1905, and our current fine art collection includes over 2,000 pieces of artwork. The collection is made up of artworks that were gifted to St. Kate's by alumni, friends, and artists, artworks that have been commissioned, purchased, or loaned, and artworks by former professors and students. Today's virtual tour includes a small sampling of artwork installed in common areas of Durham Hall and Cour de Catherine, also known as CDC. However, viewers will notice that there is fine art installed in nearly every building on campus and throughout the outdoor grounds at St. Kate's. Visual art had a distinctive role in the early history of the college. Mother Antonia McHugh, the college's first president and dean, valued the presence of artwork on campus. She also valued art instruction and was known for sending art faculty to Europe to study. Some of these early faculty members refined their painting techniques by making copies of masterpieces they saw in international museums. These copies, many of which featured religious themes, were sold locally in the Twin Cities, mainly to churches. The money was used to fund the early development of the College of St. Catherine. Fine art continues to have a significant presence on our campus today. Not only does the fine art collection enhance the beauty of our spaces, it invites scholarly engagement and analysis through campus fine art tours such as this. The campus community and the public is also welcome to further interact with the collection through our visual resources library located in the visual arts building. The artwork installed on campus today represents a 25 year effort to highlight the work of women artists. However, as we continue to grow the university's fine art collection, we are prioritizing the acquisition and public installation of artwork by women artists of color, as well as women artists from Minnesota. The first stop on our tour of the St. Catherine University Fine Art Collection is the reception area on the first floor of Durham, where we have a selection of paintings from the Catherine Portrait, a series of 40 oil on panel paintings featuring portraits of students, faculty, staff, administration, and members of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. The Catherine portrait was completed in 2011 by Patricia Olson, Professor Emerita of Art and Art History. A larger installation of additional portraits from this series can also be seen on the fourth floor of CDC. These paintings were made over a three-year period. The artist photographed her subjects and made paintings based on the images. As you can see at the lower right, the artist even included herself in this series. Patricia's portraits address the idea of individuality within the shared experience of belonging to the community of St. Catherine University. She was interested in providing what she calls a visual archive of the university community in the beginning of the 21st century, highlighting a variety of people from across the campus depicting differing races, ethnic backgrounds, ages, genders, abilities, and roles. In her own considerations about this project, Patricia points out that portraiture has a long tradition in art history, and usually portraits were intended to honor and glorify the individual pictured. Consider the Mona Lisa, historic paintings of royalty or religious figures, and presidential portraits. Often, we don't view these portraits in the context of their communities or the people they represent. The artist has written, quote, The Catherine portrait suggests the possibility that at this time in history, a painter can present an individual in all their glory, yet also give this individual context and connection to a larger whole, beyond the anime and alienation of previous decades, end quote. I think it is important to note that these portraits are most powerful in their relationship with one another. Though the individual paintings are not very large, each one measures about 16 by 16 inches, they maintain a significant presence in the space because they hang together. Together they reflect a vibrant and diverse community, one that is committed to this institution, which has the education of women at its core. 
Patricia Olson is a St. Paul artist who received her BA in studio art from McAllister College and an MFA in visual studies from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. She is a founding member of the Women's Art Registry of Minnesota. She led the graphic design program at St. Kate's for 21 years, and she is currently the director of the Women's Art Institute, a studio intensive art course offered every summer at St. Kate's for contemporary women artists of all ages and disciplines. Just across the reception area from the Catherine portrait is an oil on canvas painting by Minneapolis artist, Elizabeth Erickson. When I introduce this painting in person, I often begin by asking viewers, what do you see? How does it make you feel? Students often respond by telling me they see large, fluid, and gestural brush marks. They see holes of light where the yellow paint pulses through the dark purples and reds. They sense movement, energy, and power in the painting, even without fully understanding the artist's intent or inspiration. The artist herself has explained that most viewers notice both attention and release in this painting, which is an abstract expressionist composition the artist made in response to the death of a very good friend. The painting reveals an emotional duality, the extreme sadness of the artist's loss, and at the same time, comfort knowing that her friend was relieved from pain. Elizabeth explained, quote, I spent three weeks with him while he was in hospice care toward the end of his life. While I sat with him, I witnessed his many friends joining his bedside to say goodbye. He was a college instructor. He taught art and philosophy, and he lived with great intent. His students adored him. He was truly a master and a great soul. He generated an amazing energy when he died. I wanted this painting to be a real homage of his soul rising. He was a beloved friend." End quote. Elizabeth Erickson is a painter, poet, and educator. In 1964, she earned her BA from the College of St. Teresa in Winona, Minnesota, and in 1998, she earned her MFA in painting from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, where she would later become a faculty member in 1983. She is a founding member of the Women's Art Registry of Minnesota and is the founder and former director of the Women's Art Institute. Elizabeth is known for her expressive abstract paintings that explore the intersection of feminism, spirituality, and nature. We chose to pair Elizabeth and Patricia's paintings in the same space because they epitomize the university's vision of taking women seriously and empowering them not just through the liberal arts, but very specifically through the visual arts. Both artists were influential in the feminist art movement in Minnesota in the 1970s. They advocated and organized for the development of local artists, and they designed educational art curriculum and pedagogy that centers women artists. In the Durham parlor hangs a painting of the university's namesake, St. Catherine of Alexandria. This rendition of St. Catherine was painted by Sister Mary Barissa Mabug in 1906. Sister Barissima became the first art instructor at St. Kate's and taught art at the college between 1905 and 1910. Sister Barissima's painting includes several symbols associated with St. Catherine, who was martyred in Alexandria, Egypt in the 4th century. As you can see, Catherine leans on the wheel at the lower right, which represents her sainthood. According to Catholic tradition, Catherine was a devout Christian who lived in the year 305 during the reign of the Roman Empire. By the age of 18, she defeated Roman Emperor Maxentius in a debate in which she denounced Roman gods, called upon the emperor to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the one true God, and converted the empire's best philosophers to Christianity. As a result, Maxentius ordered Catherine's death upon a spiked breaking wheel, which shattered upon her touch. This miracle led to St. Catherine's association with the wheel, an emblem that is present throughout St. Catherine University. Born to a noble family, Catherine's crown establishes her wealth and her status as royalty. In the painting, Catherine is holding a quill, suggesting her devotion to her education, as well as her role as the patron saint of philosophers and scholars. In reality, St. Catherine is likely a combination of several women in Alexandria, who were punished by the Romans for their faith. It is important to note that this painting of Catherine was inspired by the Renaissance period of art history, 
which accounts for Catherine's classical features and dress. There are several images of St. Catherine on campus, each one varying stylistically and revealing the visions, inspirations, and imaginations of a variety of artists. I often challenge students to find other images of St. Catherine on campus and encourage them to consider how they are similar or different from the prominent version pictured here. The artworks located in the Center for Social Justice and Spirituality are a combination of screen prints and reproductions of prints by Carita Kent, also known as Sister Mary Carita. Carita was an artist, educator, and social justice advocate. She was born in Fort Dodge, Iowa in 1918 and entered the Immaculate Heart of Mary Religious Order at the age of 18. She went on to teach and lead the art department at Immaculate Heart of Mary College in Los Angeles. According to the Carita Art Center, also in Los Angeles, quote, Carita's work evolved from figurative and religious imagery to the incorporation of commercial advertisements and slogans, popular song lyrics, biblical verses, poetry, and literature. Throughout the 1960s, her work became increasingly political, urging viewers to consider poverty, racism, and injustice, end quote. A particularly nice example of this work can be seen in the piece titled Loud and Clear, juxtaposing rectangular sections of green, blue, and orange, and with boldly brushed typography and handwritten text, the composition is punctuated by an orange circle, drawing our eyes to the text underneath, which quotes the French philosopher Albert Camus and calls upon Christians to, quote, speak out and, quote, confront the bloodstained face that history has taken on today, end quote. Though the artist is not addressing a specific event or action, the civil rights and anti-war movements dominated the era in which the work was made. Carita's work often investigated the intersection of spirituality and social justice. Corita is known for the pop art aesthetic evident in the prints exhibited here, lively and fresh color with graphic abstract forms where text is a significant compositional element. Corita utilized the screen printing process, a method of printmaking in which ink is applied to paper through a mesh screen, except in the area where a blocking stencil is placed. In 1968, Corita left the order and moved to Boston. After 1970, her work evolved into a sparser, more introspective style, likely influenced by her secular life in a new city, as well as her battles with cancer. She remained active in social causes until her death in 1986. Additional works by Carita, as well as her students, can be seen on the first floor of Durham, which highlights works featured in the Catherine G. Murphy Gallery 2015 exhibition titled, Look at This and Look Again and see anew. Three works by artist Ida Komoji Ankara hang near the second floor atrium of Cour de Catherine. Born in Ghana, Africa in 1976, Ida came to the United States in 1997 to attend St. Catherine University, where she received a BA in studio art with an emphasis in graphic design. She went on to get her MFA in graphic design at the University of Minnesota and is now a professor in the art and design department at Eastern Kentucky University. In 2006, Ida returned to St. Kate's for a solo exhibition in the Catherine G. Murphy Gallery titled Cross-Cultural Design. Six of the digital prints exhibited in cross-cultural design were purchased by the university and three of them are installed here. Ida's digital designs reveal a synthesis of Ghanaian culture and the Western alphabet to create Adinkra symbols. Adinkra symbols communicate various themes related to the history, truths, and philosophies of the Akan people of Ghana and Western Africa. Historically, these symbols were stamped on clothing and worn during special occasions in times of mourning. In the digital prints displayed here, Ida utilizes a repeating layout of Western glyphs, or letters of the alphabet, to produce Adinkra patterns. Each print contains a different Adinkra symbol, which connects to a belief of the Akan people. In the left print, titled Great Fortress, repetition of the lowercase v makes up the Adinkra symbol known as Eban, which references a fence or fortress symbolizing strength, protection, and security. 
In the middle print, titled Osram, repetition of the lowercase s creates the Adinkra symbol for Osram, which is the Akan word for moon, a symbol of faith, patience, understanding, and determination. In the right print, titled I Keep What I Hear, the repetition of the letter O makes up the Adinkra symbol for the concept of learning by listening, which symbolizes knowledge, wisdom, and patience. About her work, Ida explains, quote, As a graphic designer and an artist, I am trying to create a new medium by introducing elements from different cultures. This integration respects both languages, and the new languages that, that is created maintains the forms of each culture. End quote. Ida believes using Western letters to form Adinkra symbols transforms the historical process of stamping cloth from ancient craft to the modern world of multimedia graphic art. New York-based artist Carol Hamoy created the work titled Triangle Fire, which is currently installed on the third floor atrium of CDC. Carol is a first-generation Jewish-American feminist artist whose work explores the history and perspectives of women through social issues. Her mixed-media installations usually include material references to early 20th century women's clothing, such as lace, cotton fabric, and dressing gowns. Exploring themes of tradition and identity, her work often references her family's history as immigrants who worked in the American garment industry. Triangle Fire features replicas of shirtwaists being made at the time of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire in New York on March 25, 1911. It was the city's largest industrial disaster and caused the death of 146 garment workers, 123 of whom were women and girls, most of them Jewish and Italian immigrants between the ages of 14 and 23. They succumbed to the fire or jumped from the building in hopes of survival. The conditions in the factory were typical of the time. Flammable textiles were stored throughout the space. Remnants and scraps covered the floors. Paper patterns and tissue papers hung above the work tables. There were no fire extinguishers, and exits to fire escapes and stairwells were locked to prevent theft and unauthorized work breaks. It is believed that the fire began accidentally with a match or a cigarette that wasn't completely smothered, and it was clear that the poor factory conditions contributed to the significant loss of life. The fire led to legislation requiring improved factory safety standards and catalyzed the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, which fought for better working conditions for employees in the industry. This installation is notable for its overall monochromatic color, which gives it a quiet and intimate presence in the space. The shirtwaists are accentuated by small mirrors, beaded straight pins, clasps, lace, and artificial flowers lined with pearls. The left shirtwaist is singed with dark smudges, certainly referencing the fire. These elements work together to point to the delicacy of human lives, reminding the viewer of the real people at the center of the factory disaster. The subtle elegance of the installation is contrasted by stark and seemingly gruesome passages of text composed across each lace-covered shirtwaist. Incredibly, the text quotes come from newspaper articles of the time. For example, the middle shirtwaist reads, In twos and threes, the women and girls dropped from the sills, hurtled through the air, and fell to the pavements. In Triangle Fire, the artist effectively narrates the history of the Triangle tragedy by centering the experience of the factory workers who were poorly paid immigrant women laborers. Carol gives voice to these women and affirms their dignity as human beings while reminding the viewer of the power of collective influence to fight injustice. The final stop on our tour is the fourth floor of CDC, where you can find an installation titled Borealis by alumna Christina Fellman. Christina graduated from St. Kate's with a Master of Arts in Education in both art and theater. She is a visual artist and performer who is drawn to creative projects that combine both of these passions. Christina's experience in theater seems particularly evident in Borealis, which has a three-dimensional quality that reminds me of a stage set. The installation is made up of wing-like shapes created from fabric and steel wire, each one suspended a few inches from the wall by clear thread. 
The installation sways very slightly with airflow changes in the space, giving the artwork movement and energy. Borealis was inspired by pictures from the Hubble telescope. Christina explains, quote, images of the Milky Way and star clusters give an impression of movement through time, especially in the way there are light arcs across the night sky and fades to morning. The contradiction between static imagery and movement becomes central to my compositions. By using sheer fabric and paper, I explore how light and shadow become part of the movement. The fabric creates an organic, somewhat simple abstraction of the original image or theme, while the bent wire relays a tension that cannot be duplicated on canvas. This installation explores the scope of textures, colors, shapes, and compositions in the vast expanse of the night sky." End quote. This installation was purchased and gifted to the university by the Friends of the Catherine G. Murphy Gallery. It was originally exhibited in the 2017 show titled Vision Plus Vocation, St. Catherine University Alumni Invitational Exhibition. Thank you for joining us for today's virtual fine art tour. For more information about the St. Catherine University Fine Art Collection, please visit gallery.stkate.edu and click on Collections, where you can access additional collection highlights, the Visual Resources Library, and our digital collections.